Hi, my name's Carolyn Mee, and I'm the founder and CEO of Sound Scouts. And I am Quao Moreno, and I am the Chief Technology Officer. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which we work and play. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Always was always will be Aboriginal land. Mobile games are enabling access to health solutions on a scale that has never been possible before. And the impact of that access will be far reaching. Let us tell you about Sound Scouts and the thousands of children it has already helped. Let's start with the story of Adam a young man I met when he was delivering firewood. Adam was thrown out of school at 15. He, by his own admission, was disobedient and disruptive. And as it turns out, it was all because Adam had a hearing loss that no one had picked up. So here was an issue that could have easily been treated that has now potentially defined Adam's future. And sadly, Adam's not alone. While newborn hearing screening typically detects moderate to severe hearing loss, hearing issues can develop at any time, typically caused by genetic disorders, trauma, viruses, and most commonly ear infections. In fact, globally, there are around 285 million children who experience hearing issues that impact their quality of life. Because when their loss goes unnoticed, they miss out on learning and they miss out on socialising. Despite the high number of children impacted by undetected hearing issues, the means of testing a child's hearing has remained unchanged for around 100 years. And it's for that reason that we took on the challenge of gamifying hearing screening. I think one of the critical things for early literacy development is a child's hearing. Uh, they hear sounds, they have to process the sounds, they have to understand the sounds, they have to understand how sounds go together. If they've got a hearing difficulty, uh, that can really affect their ability to pick up those foundation skills and it will affect their learning for a long time. Those things may be picked up later, but by that time, that early development has been critically missed. Well, hearing is vitally important in the classroom. Um, being one of our five senses, it's something children use constantly in the form of instruction, collaboration, um, teamwork, um, just being able to survive in a classroom, one needs to be able to, to hear what's going on. The socialising in the playground is a key element of the child's development. Kids just love to be accepted and to be part of the group in the playground. And children who cannot um, understand or hear all the instructions would miss out. And it often affects their game, their play and their inclusiveness in a group. Relieving Deputy Principal Laura Barry understands the challenges of detecting hearing issues, especially in older children. I think the difficulty in recognising hearing loss in a child um, differs from age group to age group. I think teachers in those early years are a little bit more attuned to the fact that there could be a hearing issue that's um, having an effect on their learning, especially in literacy. In the older years, um, I think if it's not caught early, that's when it perhaps becomes more difficult for teachers and it can be incorrectly labelled as a learning difficulty instead of a hearing issue. Um, especially if you get to a year three or a year four child, if that hearing loss hasn't been identified at a young age, yet they've struggled with literacy, learning and, and reading really. Hearing impaired student Aidan 
didn't realise he had a hearing loss in the first years of school. So, so stuff I can hear in, like better and stuff I can hear now in the classes, I can hear air, like the wind blowing, I, which is something I actually really like the sound of now. And like whispering sometimes now, which can actually get handy in class. So the problem is clear and our challenge was set. Could we make a hearing test that is not only easy and accessible, but actually fun and engaging for the kids? With these goals in mind, we designed more detailed requirements for this project when we started years ago. First, user friendliness would always be a top priority. People and kids playing the game should be able to do it with any reasonable quality headphones and most mobile devices. Also, results should definitely be immediate. Being an app, we wanted the game to send the data as soon as it was completed, then processed through an online algorithm and immediately sent back to the device or the email of the guardian. And of course, we would not be able to call this a successful solution unless we actually got the science and the data to prove it. So we would have to do a clinical study comparing Sound Scouts with standard audiometry testing. Sound Scouts lives within the context of Games for Health, a world which is growing every year. And it includes games that range from research such as Sea Hero Quest in its study of dementia, all the way to games that are targeted for fitness, such as the super popular Ring Fit or Swivel Tilt. And we would like to say that it includes also games that were may, maybe not marketed or made as games for health, but it nonetheless have had a huge positive impact on people's well-being, such as Pokemon Go. So the Sound Scouts app enables any responsible adult to check a child's hearing. It's been developed in collaboration with the National Acoustic Laboratories and they're global leaders in, in hearing science. The test is disguised as a game, so children aren't aware that they're being tested, which is great because then they don't get nervous or apprehensive. So the children play the game and each interaction collects a valuable piece of hearing data. When the game is finished, the data is sent to the cloud, processed via our advanced algorithm, and a report is instantly returned to the device. So you immediately get an indication of the child's hearing ability. Now that report can be used by schools or clinicians to inform parents if there is a problem. And the report will often give guidance as to whether the child should see a doctor or uh, Hearing Australia if they do have what looks like a permanent hearing issue. In developing Sound Scouts, we knew that it would be critical that the game was evidence-based. And in fact, our science, our research was published in the International Journal of Audiology in 2018. Subsequently, there's been quite a number of papers published involving researching sound scouts. What's been missing in the hearing healthcare system is a low cost, easily administered, reliable test of hearing that can be widely applied to children around the time they start school. The sound scouts hearing game looks and feels like a game, but it's got several advanced scientific principles that enable it to detect a wide range of hearing problems. These include conductive hearing loss, um, arising from infections or other problems, sensory neural hearing loss, which of course is permanent, auditory neuropathy, which is a, a newly found form of hearing loss, and central auditory processing disorders, the, the difficulties of hearing that are coming from the brain. Sound Scouts brings together the innovative and creative side with the clinical and technical side, and it really represents the perfect marriage of these three elements. Without the creative side, we wouldn't have the data that we do. And without the technical expertise, we wouldn't have the reliability in the results that enable Sound Scouts to be a medical device. Working with the National Acoustic Laboratories, we set out to develop a comprehensive test that incorporated a test of speech in quiet, a tone test, and a test of listening difficulties in noise. 
These three tests working well together would help us to identify the likely cause of the child's fail results. And this would offer cost savings to the health department by directing the child along the correct care pathway. Because if a child has a middle ear issue, they typically need to see a GP and then sometimes on to an ear, nose and throat specialist. Whereas if they have an inner ear hearing issue, it's more likely that they need to see an audiologist and be fitted with hearing aids. During the course of development of Sound Scouts, we tested around a thousand children and they were tested both with the audiologist and they played the Sound Scouts game. And we were able to compare the results and to eventually establish the norm. What was normal and expected uh, for a child with no hearing issues versus what might be expected for a child with a hearing loss. One of the exciting pieces of data that we discovered in our research was that when it comes to listening in noise, our ability to hear in noise improves by 1.4 decibels each year. We had data from four-year-old children to 16, 17-year-old children and then on to adults. And we were able to see this very, very uh, specific trend, which makes us aware of the importance for younger children to be able to hear in a classroom. Because if they're trying to learn in a noisy environment, they're going to really struggle. Now, when we tell you all this, we're presenting all these screenshots and images of the app that we are very proud of. But of course, it did not start like this. The app has gone through dozens of versions, complete visual redesigns, major revisions, and an unbelievable amount of feedback and smaller iterations. Throughout, we may have given the impression, and this is definitely common, commonly still seen, that the process, the whole project is something like this, right? You start with a problem, you do the research, you design the solution, you develop the solution, and ta-da, you have a, <laughs> a finished product. But it will, it will never, ever be like this. And if you try to force it into this kind of process, you're going to end up with something that does not include proper user feedback and testing. So what you need to adopt is much more something like this. An iterative or almost spiral-like process where you go through the same cycle again and again and again. So after you have your initial solution, which you will be calling prototype at that stage, then you start again. Okay, what are the problems with this MVP, minimum viable product? What's working, what's not working? And then you go through the cycle again and again and again. And, and yeah, pretty much you, you, you never feel like it's finished because there's always something better. But you definitely end up with something better and something way more holistic and encompassing of feedback and encompassing of of actual real world usage than you would have if you have if you had a completely linear process. One of the stories that we always love to tell that it's a perfect example of this is when we first wanted to stop or give pause to kids who were just randomly tapping on the screen too much and invalidating the results, we first thought, okay, let's put like a hand, you know, like a universal symbol of stop. But kids actually saw that as a pattern, a pattern matching exercise. So they saw like, whoa, it's my own hand. And they just put their whole hand on the screen thinking that that was what they had to do. So we ended up changing that. And we would have never realized that unless we had tested our assumptions. One of the most practical pieces of advice we can give is if you are in Games for Health, depending on the claims that you're making, you may be under the jurisdiction of a medical device regulation which in Australia is the TGA, or the Therapeutic Good Association. So definitely make that part of your strategy as early as you can. But the question, the question in the end remains, has this whole journey been worth it? 
In 2017, the test was trialled at Middle Harbour Public School. Relieving Principal Carol Jay welcomed the technology, understanding the importance of hearing in the school environment. And Sound Scouts is there, it's, it's been tested, um, in fact we've tested it in our school so I can verify the results and um, it's, um, it's something that you can use in your home, um, at school, together with the classroom teacher, um, it's, it's there for us and it's, it's been designed for children, they en engage with it and it gives the results, it's an instant result and it's something that impacts on a child's life profoundly if, if there is a hearing loss. So it, it's there, take advantage, download Sound Scouts app and use it. So if we can provide a program like Sound Scouts to link into the classroom and what's happening in the classroom and we can pick up any difficulties that a child may be having, we can then put in place systems to help that child so they don't miss any critical parts of their learning. Having worked with children who've received hearing aids following a recognition of hearing loss, you see a real increase in that engagement and also an increase in their confidence and, and their positive approach to their learning because they now have the same access as other students in the classroom to so much of the learning that's taking place. Home before my, I had my hearing aid, I would constantly say what, pardon and sorry, but now that I have hearing aid, it's, I sometimes do say what, pardon and sorry, but it's unlikely now. So in more concrete outcomes, Sound Scouts has tested over 70,000 kids to date, with thousands of them having been found with middle ear issues and a significant number with permanent hearing loss. And most importantly, many of them have also now received hearing aids, all because they play this game. We have received many awards over the years, but of course, as corny as it sounds, the greatest prize has been changing children's lives. Looking ahead into the future, we are expanding the app and taking what we have built to create a full solution for the management of hearing screening. And again, this is just another loop in this iterative process that we were talking about before seeing what works, listening to the users, understanding the problems that they face and so on. When we first developed the app, we thought that the main users would be parents, homes, but very, we quickly realized that actually schools were the, the best users because they were able to implement Full processes and protocols to use Sound Scouts in all their classrooms and in new years of, of schooling and so on. So this has been one of the main shifts that we did. And this new platform that we're currently developing is one of the steps that we are taking to accommodate this, this part of the, of the insights that we got. The journey of creating Sound Scouts really has been a magical one. It's been a journey of collaboration, revelation, inspiration, and finally, celebration. And we celebrate the fact that we've been able to identify children with hearing issues, and we hope that we have changed their lives. And we know that in the future, there's many more children who will benefit from this magical game.